I picked up a power supply recently, the Cooler Master Master Watt Light. This is the 600 watt version, so I thought I'd make a quick video just to give you an overview and an idea on this power supply. And that's a budget unit, so you get a pretty standard package. There's the power lead, some screws to attach it to the case, and that's basically it apart from the user manual. There's no stickers or any snazzy stuff like that. Now what's different with this power supply versus the pictures that I saw online is that all of the cables are braided. So they've obviously upgraded that over the um, initial release which was just over a year ago. Now I'm putting the sizes and lengths of the cable on the screen so when I'm going through the video you'll be able to see the length of each of those uh, cables because that can be quite important particularly if you have a larger ATX case. You won't have any issues with micro ATX cases because of the size. So the cable length's pretty good. I really didn't have any problems at all with this. And you have lots of connectors, including the six SATA and the two connectors for PCI Express with the graphics card. This just lists out the connectors, different versions of the different power levels. So the 700 watt has even more. Now, as far as the build quality goes, it's a budget power supply, so it's fairly decent. There's nothing particularly wrong with the case quality. It feels okay, and it does have a hydrodynamic bearing fan. And I've put the load measurements and noise settings that are on the screen there for you. So if you are someone that's into quiet computing, then I would definitely go slightly higher with the power level and just keep the load level down and the noise as well. I've done a little noise test later on. I'm just showing you the uh, casing so you can see the specs on it. So reasonable enough build. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart, even though this is pretty cheap. The reason I got this one was because um, they didn't have the 500 watt in stock, but the components look reasonably well put together. Obviously, you're not going to get top level stuff in a power supply of this price. And I think I paid about £45 for this. But uh, soldering looks tidy enough. If you open that up, your warranty is gone. So I'm not going to open that up. There are people that have done teardowns on this. And this just lists out some of your specifications. And you'll see the certification uh, marks for this, which is a requirement really for any of these products. This is just the user manual, just to show you the specs on the other models and gives you an overview of the product. Uh, don't really need this, but it's quite useful to compare the power outputs from the different ones. So this one would suit someone who's possibly thinking later on maybe of upgrading a graphics card so gaming 600 watts gives you quite a bit of headroom on that side and you get a three-year warranty with this power supply That was a quick sound test that I did. You can hear that it's much quieter than the previous power supply that was in the unit. Really, you can only just about hear the graphics card fan, even under load. This is actually a very nice, quiet power supply, so I was quite pleasantly uh, impressed in that side of things. Now, I fitted it to a micro ATX case. The fact that it's not modular can be a bit of an issue. They do have a 500 watt modular that's just come out. And if you've got any doubts about the certification on these power supplies, you can go to the website, the Plug Load Solutions, and you can see the test report for each of the power supplies so um, that will confirm what the actual efficiency levels are I mean it's only 80 plus rather than a bronze or higher but you know maybe eventually we'll get a bronze for a budget one but uh, still compared to the budget one which I have here um, that's probably around about 70% efficient so you're going to have some power savings the CIT power supplies are not particularly quiet as you heard earlier and the fan tends to run at full speed but they work um, I haven't had failures on these. I've used them for a few older PCs or I've replaced power supplies where you can't justify a more expensive unit, but I would suggest something a bit better. Now, you do have a few choices. You've the uh, Corsair with the CX series. I haven't had a lot of luck with those. Tend to have had failures just out of warranty. And EVGA, they also have one. Uh, fairly good output on that. Um, decent price there's also the vs 550 but what i would suggest looking at and it's quite important i think and it often gets overlooked if you look at the specifications look for the fan bearing now i think they've upgraded the cx as they've shown on the uh, spec for that to a rifle bearing but you'll see that the uh, evga one is a sleeve bearing and i have no time at all for sleeve bearings because they just don't last in my experience even for a case fan the bearings just wear out and I had fan failures on the CX ones, but perhaps with the rifle bearing that would improve things. 
as far as voltages keep an eye on that this one obviously brand new power supply you should see just over the 3.3 5 and 12 volts a failing power supply you will see those voltages drop so that's if you can actually boot the pc so hopefully that was a bit of use to you i will update the review if i have any issues with this power supply and thanks for watching